All right, welcome to Basic Technology. My name is Mr. Wright, and this is a course that I have designed for the high school level, um, teaching all about computers and the basics and uh, how to use them, how to survive in a digital world. And so I've decided to put this course online for anyone who wants to watch it so that you can gain a uh, some basic computer skills uh, for yourself. And a lot of times I think the understanding of computers is sometimes why we don't use computers effectively. So when you understand everything about your computer, the ins and outs and what's underneath the hood, then you can actually really get the most out of your computer. And so that's what this course is about. It's about gaining that basic understanding. And even with lesson one here, we're starting with operating systems. But um, this is not, by any stretch of the means, uh, the only thing we'll talk about. We'll talk about uh, definitely some networking in the future, definitely how to use your directory structure, operating systems, um, and all the way through many different things to cover, uh, and little programs along the way to make you a effective user of the computer. And so this is a basic course. It's just getting you the groundwork that you need through a series of lessons on how to be a computer whiz. All right, so starting out lesson one, discovering computers in our basic technology course, uh, we're talking today about operating systems. So I wanna give you a definition um, to give you a foundation of what operating systems are. An operating system, and I did not write any of these definitions or make up this information. Uh, it's all from either Wikipedia or sites online. And so I did not come up with these definitions by any stretch of the means. But an operating system is a program that acts as an interface between the user and the computer hardware and controls the execution of all kinds of programs. And what's cool about that is uh, operating systems it didn't used to be these really high-end user interfaces, these GUI interfaces we call them, uh, or graphical user interfaces. They used to be just a couple lines on a screen and there was a lot of noise going on to computers. It was very ancient back in the day. But computers have changed. They have become these cool, beautiful, amazing things that interact with the users. And no longer is the um, is the operating system this dry, boring, a couple lines of green text on a screen. No, it is a uh, interface that uh, executes the programs that we want to. And mainly, the uh, let's be honest, the obvious program we're all clicking on is the internet. Uh, but one thing in this definition I really want to focus on, and that is the word program. The operating system is a program. And it's not the first program that's installed on the computer, but it is the main program you use. And most people don't think of the operating system as a program. They think of it as, well, oh, it's, it's like the only thing I've ever known to be on a computer. That's not the case. It's actually a program that's installed on the computer and you use it to install other programs like Word or PowerPoint or Excel or Google Chrome. So the operating system itself is a program living on a physical piece of hardware called the hard drive. And that's what makes this definition so different from what I think we usually think as the stereotype of an operating system. We don't think of it as a program on the computer. We think of it as kind of a, like, the only thing that the computer is, what the computer actually is. So it's not what the computer actually is. It's, it's a program installed on the hard drive of the computer. And so we'll kind of get into that framework and kind of unbox that as time goes on this lesson. But that's just a basic understanding that I want to give you to start out with. So there are many types of operating systems in the world, and, and they're very unique. They each have kind of their own purposes, and each one of these can be used for, for many different purposes. I'm just giving kind of some overview of what people stereotypically use some of these things for. Um, but there are operating systems for servers. Mainly, these are computers that run the internet, or they run personal networks inside of businesses, small businesses, or you can even have um, a server in your house if you're very high end, uh, like myself. Um, a lot of times, operating systems are specific ones that hackers use or people that do penetration testing. Um, for instance, 
uh, a lot of the Linux products they do, uh, Kali Linux, people use those to learn about network sniffing and using uh, different pieces of software to um, break into systems, um, some for the sake of testing them, some for the sake of um, doing it illegally, which is never recommended, by the way. Uh, do not ever do that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's there's hacker operating systems, I would call them. I'll put them in that category. Uh, there's also laptop and desktop operating systems. And these, uh, the traditional ones uh, that everybody uses, there's phone and tablet, there's PLCs or programmable logic computers for um, basically that run uh, equipment in factories and different things. And then there's also service computers like ATMs, uh, scanners, you know, Alexa and Alexa turn off. As soon as I said that, my Alexa turned on. <laughs> what a stinker. Anyway, uh, so yeah, there's all different types of operating systems out there on the planet. They're very unique and each one has their own specific task. The well-known operating systems that people are familiar with uh, tend to be these ones right here that I've listed on the slide. And um, the first is Unix. Now, not many people use Unix anymore. It's just a lot of operating systems are, because it's kind of legacy, but a lot of operating systems are built on Unix, and that's what makes them uh, so unbelievable. Uh, so a more typical one people use is Linux. Um, and what Linux is, is Linux kind of comes, it's open source, meaning anybody can um, download it for free, which is pretty cool. Um, and I teach in another course how to install operating systems. But uh, Linux is actually a, uh, it comes in flavors or distros, distributions. And so like Kali Linux, like I talked about a second ago in the previous slide right here with the hacker, um, it's actually a flavor of Linux. So Ubuntu is the most typical flavor of Linux. So usually when people are talking about that, um, but you know, there's other very good ones out there too, like Mint. And so uh, then we have OS X or whatever operating system Apple is on at this moment that changes year to year, um, whether it be Yosemite, whether it be, you know, whatever, whatever name that they put, they have a flavor every so many years that they come out with um, of OS for Apple computers. And then uh, Windows, obviously, is Microsoft. We are on Windows 10. Um, Windows 7 is, I believe, it's unsupported now. And then you have Android. And Android, again, comes in flavors. Um, some of them have really cool names, you know, like Ice Cream Sandwich. <laughs> so <laughs> they have, you know, many different code names. But they come in flavors as well. And you know, with each new operating system, we continue to improve or press the boundaries of what's been known in previous operating systems. And that's what's really cool. And so uh, then there's uh, iOS, which has to do with uh, Apple phones and also Chrome uh, from Google. And some people would call that uh, Chromexium or um, either or there's different forms of it out there. Uh, Chrome OS actually, it runs on Chromebooks too as well. So there's lots of different types of well-known operating systems I think that people use today. And the key to remember is that they each have their own strength and their own weaknesses. And uh, it depends on the task you really need. And that's, that's why there's many operating systems for many choices for people. Uh, next, we have some common names for operating systems. Um, and some of these are outdated because some of them are obviously not used anymore, but Unix Kent's new system, 1969, that's when uh, that uh, system was developed. Uh, Linux, you have Ubuntu, Kali, Mint, um, OS X, maybe it's called Mojave, uh, or, or whatever brand or title they're on. Uh, Windows, Windows 10, getting specific, Android, Pi, so they have specific names for iOS, 11, 12, 13, as they count up, um, Chrome, uh, Chrome OS. So they all have specific names for them. And so whenever you're talking generally about the terms, uh, Unix, Linux, OS, uh, X, Windows, Android, iOS, Chrome, you can be specific then and kind of get into its each little niche, if that makes sense, with operating systems. So that's something to know. Uh, this is a video that I'm going to link down in the description. Go ahead and watch that. This is a guy giving the history of operating systems. I think it's really cool and um, uh, super helpful information. 
And so I'm going to shoot you over to his channel and then come back and watch one more. I also have this video on uh, that somebody made on mainframes and what computers used to look like in the past. It's kind of interesting. This is actually a guy and they're interviewing him and he's talking about how uh, everything used to be very, very simple in the beginning, um, literally on magnetic tape and things. Uh, so go watch those videos and then come right back and we will talk about the history of operating systems. All right, so now that you're back, um, the operating systems, I kind of want to give a highlight and maybe a little history and talk about the different ones that were um, developed throughout the years and kind of how things came to be. And um, a person by the name of Ken Thompson, a programmer in the in in the lab's computing research department, had worked on uh, Multics, and he decided to write his own operating system. While he still had access to uh, the Multics environment, he wrote simulations for the new file and paging system on it, and he also programmed a game called Space Travel. But it needed more efficient and less expensive uh, and less expensive machine to run on. So eventually, he found a little-used PDP-7 at Bell Labs, and that's kind of where things all started to blossom because operating systems became a thing, and people started creating operating systems for machines. And uh, the PDP series of computers were way back in the beginning, uh, before. Uh, really some of the first systems out there where people were playing space wars on them and uh, video games actually became a thing uh, because people were uh, spending so much time on those computers fooling around trying to uh, play a game on them because no one had video games back then sad day right uh, so this is in the beginning really the unix system is kind of how it all started and, and then we got um some, another notable system that took us a giant step forward in operating systems was MS-DOS, and uh, or it stands for Microsoft Disk Operating System, 1980. And MS-DOS was renamed 86-DOS um, and uh, is owned by the Seattle Computer uh, Productions. It's written by Tim Patterson and uh, developed, it only took six weeks to develop, which is phenomenally fast. In today's age, you know, you spend... Uh, hundreds of thousands of man hours to get an operating system off the ground and people you know on and on and on and on and on work on it uh, but back in the day here, here you have on the screen like literally this was the example of ms dos it was literally just like command line interface black screen green or gray text like very simple it wasn't the awesome windows or mac operating system that we have today or linux it was just simple. Um, and then Macintosh, um, or Apple in 1984, so we have 1980, 1984, the Macintosh system uh, one was the first version of Apple's Macintosh operating system. Uh, started the classic uh, series of Macintoshes and um, it became one of the world's you know, famous personal computing devices. In fact, Apple, if it wasn't for Apple, I don't know how well the computing in industry would have done. Um, they really got everything off the ground and made it so that everybody wanted to buy one and put one in their house. And they made this super, super simple interface. In fact, you can see a lot of the things that you used to see about Apple, you know, the little uh, Apple symbol in the left-hand corner, the trash can down at the bottom of the screen, um, simple apps that you used to use on the Macintosh system. Again, very archaic lots of dots, lots of blocky looking interface, but you can kind of see the computer developing into a GUI interface. And so it's nothing like we have today, but it was cool back then. People were enthralled by having something for the first time to use their, uh, to use on their computer. Uh, next up we have Windows 1.0 in 1985, and it's really where Windows got its graphical user interface, and um, Microsoft have worked with Apple Computer to develop applications for Apple's uh, January 1984 original Macintosh, uh, the first mass-produced personal computer with a graphical user interface, or GUI, 
and that enabled users to see uh, user-friendly icons on the screen. But Windows 1.1 was released on November 20th, 1985, and was the first version of, of Microsoft Windows line. And, and when this came out, uh, obviously, it, you know, this started the whole uh, two-part series, Mac versus PC, in my opinion. And I'm a PC guy just by nature. That's just my opinion. Uh, I would choose a PC over a Mac just because of uh, what you can do with it. Uh, but there's there's some coolness to both. Uh, Mac is incredibly uh, awesome looking. It's just a beautiful computer as far as the way that they've designed the unibody and everything. And so here the war started of of the more scrappy uh, Windows you know PC guys and the more polished, clean, graphical, interesting interface of the uh, Apple computer or Mac users. And so, and then in 1991, we got a huge um, highlight to operating systems. Uh, Linux came onto the board with a Linux kernel, an open source operating system. And um, a guy by the name of uh, Linus Tovar, Tovods, if I'm saying his name correctly, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> no big deal. I, I'm not saying everything correctly, I'm sure, in this video. Uh, but he, uh, and again, I got all this information from uh, the internet and different sites and uh, Wikipedia, but what he did was he developed this operating system that was you know, free and, and anybody could get a hold of it, just download it off the internet, basically, and uh, stick it on a USB and throw it on computers, and it's great. It, it runs... Uh, Linux is used in a lot of the internet infrastructure uh, to to do things, and so anyway, he created that in 1991. Here's the cute little penguin icon. That's him himself. Look at that guy. Very interesting. <laughs> His smile creeps me out actually. Uh, but he he has the penguin logo. That's how you you know the Windows logo for Windows, the little Apple logo for Mac, and then to top it all off, we have a penguin. Yeah, I know. Whatever. So that's lesson one of uh, basic technology, really the information that I wanted to get to you. Uh, hopefully this was helpful in learning about operating systems, and I will see you in the next video.